Hey, Herman here. In this video, I'll show you how we can use the TPM that's in every Aruba AP to do uh, authentication, TLS authentication against the wired uplink. So let's start at the controller because we need to configure our APs to use the certificate in the TPM to do dot uh, x authentication on the uplink. In order to do that, we go in our access point and we need to reprovision it. So uh, tick the AP, we press provision here. And then if we scroll down, we go to the advanced options. Here are the options for the uplink authentication. So it's set to none now. So let's uh, configure it for to do uh, EAP TLS. Then if we want to use the TPM certificate, uh, we need to tick this box, use the factory certificates. Uh, the older alternative would be to use EST to get certificates deployed to your APs. Um, but the TPM certificate is a very convenient way of authentication. And then uh, we have an option here to append a domain name and that will do that every authentication from an AP, it will have appended uh, at aruba.ap. So you can change the name, but I'll leave it to at aruba.ap. So what this option will do is that every authentication going to the ClearPass server later on, it will have a, a AP name at aruba.ap as the username and in ClearPass we can use that to select a specific service where we can do the TLS authentication against the root certificate for the Aruba AP. So let's submit this. Um, the AP will reboot and afterwards it will do dot one x authentication. So let's switch to the ClearPass side. In ClearPass we need to do three different things. First is we need to go under administration, uh, go under certificates to the trust list and uh, there is a built-in root CA for the Aruba TPM chips. Um, that's this specific uh, root CA. And as you can see, it's uh, disabled by default. We need to enable it. And uh, you can do that with the enable button uh, here. And also make sure that the usage is uh, EAP. Yep, you can add more things here, but um, make sure that at least it has EAP uh, enabled. So. This uh, should allow us to do uh, authentication of the client certificates that are in the TPM chips. So then second step, what we need to do is we need to go to the authentication methods. And uh, we are using EPTLS, uh, but if you see the default EPTLS, it has uh, an issue that it has authorization required. So this is set to uh, enable. And what this option basically does, it will verify the send username of the certificate, uh, it will verify that against the authentication database. And in many times that is an active directory and the uh, AP certificates, these are not in the active directory. So then the authentication will fail. Uh, so what we need to do is we either need to copy this one or create a new one. And I prepared one uh, over here uh, where we, has we have disabled this authorization required. Second important thing is that if as these uh, certificates that are in the TPM are generated offline, uh, we cannot do any OCSP, so no online certificate checking. So make sure that this is set to none. So authorization required should be off. OCSP validation uh, should be set to none. So third and last thing we need to do is uh, we need to create a service. So I already have a .1x authentication service. Um, but this one is using TLS and uh, I need to do checking against my AD. So uh, the authorization uh, needs to be on for this service. So what I did is I copied the service and in this uh, service that I put just above the original service, I do an additional check where I check if the username ends with at aruba.ap and that at aruba.ap, that's the domain suffix that we configured in the mobility master before uh, when we provisioned the AP. So that will make that this service is used uh, for uh, Aruba APs and all other devices will use the normal dot one X uh, wired service. So in this service, uh, I selected the authentication method, uh, just EAP TLS, uh, the one with no authorization and no OCSP that I just created. And uh, I need to add an authentication source. So as I don't do any authorization, uh, it's not used, but you need to add something. So uh, either put it in the local user repository here or the endpoint repository, whatever uh, you think is best. Uh, but basically it's not used, so it doesn't really matter. Then in authorization, I added the endpoint repository to uh, 
yeah, check the endpoint database um, if needed. So I don't need to do any role mapping at this point. And then in the enforcement, uh, there are basically two ways to uh, do this. So first is uh, that we can uh, check if the issuer distinguished name, uh, so that's the CA, the intermediate CA that uh, issued the certificate if it contains uh, DC Aruba, DC.com. So it's an Aruba intermediate CA. Uh, then I put it in the uh, Aruba Lab VLAN. Uh, we could also check uh, in the endpoint repository. So for example, we can check if the status is set to, uh, to known. Uh, only then we can put it in the, uh, in the VLAN 31 for uh, my APs. Um, so yeah, either of these works. So this is uh, yeah, most uh, automatic and this uh, gives you some additional control. So uh, with it, whichever you like. And uh, basically uh, that's it. So uh, let's have a look in the access tracker if my AP already authenticated. So I filtered uh, for the username aruba.ap and we can see that I do have an authentication here. And if I uh, check in this one, uh, we can see the service is uh, matched, the EPTLS is matched, uh, and I got the enforcement to VLAN uh, 31. Also, if we go into the input tab and the computer tabs this is where we can see uh, the information uh, also we can see that uh, this specific uh, ap was signed by the device ca1 so there's an older one uh, for newer ap's you will have different intermediate uh, ca's uh, but they all have that uh, dc aruba uh, networks dc.com in there in them yeah we can see here also the serial number and the mac address for this uh, ap because that's the name of the certificate and uh, then in the end i see my uh, radius response where i put it in vlan 31 in my case and that's basically it and let's have a look now in the uh, controller and you can see now that my ap uh, 25 it has the flag uh, uh, one minus and uh, one minus, you can see here that it's uh, yeah, using the DPM factory certificate. One other reminder is uh, that I configured this AP as well to do .1x uh, authentication, uh, but you can see it has the F flag here. And the F flag means that it's failing the .1x authentication. So uh, one thing is that it will connect to the controller, uh, but it will not bring up any SSID. So make sure before you configure your access points to uh, do .1x authentication uh, that your port is uh, capable of doing the .1x authentication uh, as well. So in this case, this AP is connected to a port that's not configured for .1x and that also means that the AP will not be broadcasting any SIDs. Good thing is that we can change it uh, back here so we can reprovision the AP to switch the .1x authentication off again. Um, but it's just uh, something uh, you might need to be aware of. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe and comment to our channel. My name is Herman Robers.